Whoops. My wiper broke. But this isn't my truck. This is 2025. The 2025 still doesn't have a driver. Would you like to drive it? Let us know. But it's gonna need a new wiper first because I took it. My passenger wiper uh, broke on me while I was wiping down my windshield this morning. With you guessed it, bull snot. I was, but bull snot didn't break it, don't worry. They're not responsible. I, uh, I pulled the wiper arm back and usually it goes back, right? And uh, I guess it must have been cracked already, or maybe I'm just the Hulk. But I, I didn't like grief on it. I didn't yank on it. I just pulled it back like, like this, right? Like on this side, like that. And it was on the passenger side, and uh, like you saw there, it just broke right off. So we don't have those in stock here at our shop, but they're in Winnipeg. You could order them. They'll probably be here this afternoon. Uh, but I need to get going. I have a load to take out to Kenora today. So the guy suggested, why don't you just go and take 2025s? Then I can take my truck out with the wiper. And then when the wiper arm does come in, they'll just replace it on 2025 because no one's driving that truck right now anyway. So, problem solved. First thing in the morning, I replaced it myself. I was uh, busy polishing my rust. So I guess I should continue. It's not all rust, I mean, see? See? <laughs> I'm working on it, guys, don't worry, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, get going, I'll just test them out. I haven't even tested them yet. Gotta make sure they work. There's plans for the rust, don't worry. Don't worry, I've, I've read all your comments. Don't worry, there, we got plans in the works. Gonna try and get rid of that rust and uh, you know, you'll see, you'll see. Let's try this out. Ah, very nice. Now, did I have it set right? Is it going high enough? Yeah, I guess that's about as good as you can do, eh? So you can, it depends on how you install the wiper arm, if it goes like further this way or further down. I think that's about. I'd like it to go a little further up, to be honest, but it's already sitting so high on the window there. Well, at least there's a wiper, right? So today's topic of conversation uh, is sort of related to the other days with the diesel prices surging and the prices going up. Uh, this is more so along the, the lines of how trucking companies are making it work with these high diesel prices and who's really paying for it. Who pays in the end for our increased uh, cost of doing business? So this article comes from the Toronto Sun. It's from October 7th, 2021. And it's titled, Companies, or Trucking Companies, Keep On Going Thanks to the Surcharge. So what happens, it sort of explains in the article here, there's a fuel surcharge that we add on to all of our all of our freight. And it, that fluctuates with the price of diesel. If you didn't have that, most trucking companies wouldn't be able to make it with these increasing fuel costs. So I'll read a little bit of the article here and let me know what you think. So a it says, a critical cog in Canada's economy is insulated from higher fuel prices, but that still does not protect the average consumer from paying more down the line. Like all other parts of the economy, the trucking industry is facing dramatically higher fuel costs this year. But truckers can pass along the increase in the form of a fuel surcharge to customers who use their shipping services. Essentially, they charge their customers more as the price of fuel goes up. Just in the last week, fuel has gone up three or four cents a liter, said James Steed, who runs Steed Standard Transport in St uh, Stratford. This is Ontario. New message has arrived. Ooh, I have a new message. I am reading an article. Oh, it's my load assignment. Uh, taking a load of sugar water to Kenora. Right on. I'm just going to reply here real quick. Excuse me. I know we were in the middle of a discussion, but I have to let them know that I received it and that I accept it. I accept my fate. 
hours and zero minutes of remaining drive time. And I have a full day yet because I haven't really, I haven't started yet. So back to the, to the article at hand here. So th this was a, a trucking company that was interviewed in the Toronto area. And it says the 108 year old trucking company is considered a smaller operator, which is 40 trucks. They run, a, they're, their family-run business relies on the industry surcharge to stay afloat. Since January 1st of this year, 2021, retail diesel has gone up by 45%, according to the U.S. Department of Energy. A carrier just can't absorb these costs with the fluctuating prices, he says. It would put us out of business if we didn't have a fuel surcharge. That's the key part of dealing with the ups and downs of fuel pricing. Fuel is considered the biggest, second biggest cost for trucking companies after labor. It is such a huge cost, it would be crippling to not have those safeguards in place, said Marco Vigetto of the Canadian Trucking Alliance, which represents 5,000 firms nationally. Vigetto says the surcharge system keeps member companies functioning. The increase in shipping cost is ultimately passed down the food chain, possibly ending with the consumer. The customer will typically pay the price. The fluctuations will be reflected in the contract. That's the situation right now, he says, as costs are increasing throughout the entire supply chain. Dan McTeague of Canadians for Affordable Energy predicts a dire circumstance if cur current trends continue. So what I'm saying is when you go to the grocery store and you're wondering why is the price of groceries skyrocketing? I used to, you know, I used to go shopping for my family and, you know, get away with paying $200 to feed my family. Now I'm paying 300 or sometimes $400. What's going on? Everything that you have comes by truck to the store. All the food you eat comes by truck to the store. It just doesn't magically appear like at Hogwarts. Wouldn't that be awesome if there would just be a wizard and just a wave of his wand and food would appear? But then I'd be out of a job. So thankfully, uh, that, that doesn't happen here in our muggle world. So... You still need truckers like us to bring it to you. And when you look at the fuel prices, remember those fuel prices are skyrocketing up. The trucking companies can't absorb those prices. There's no way they'd all be out of business and then we'd have nothing. And there'd be no trucks on the road, no food on the shelves. We can't have that. So somebody has got to pay this extra cost. Fuel surcharge gets charged to the receiver or the shipper, whoever's paying for the shipment that surcharge they can't absorb either or they would go out of business and then you have no supermarkets and then i have nowhere to deliver stuff to and then you have nowhere to buy food at everything collapses so they pass that extra cost that we incurred with our rising diesel prices they pass that on to you through the prices of their products whether it be food or a, you know if you go to best buy you buy a tv or or anything anything around you all came to you by truck and it all took diesel fuel to get it to you even if it comes from overseas, those truck, most of those container ships, I believe, run on diesel fuel. If I'm right, I'm not a, I'm not a boat guy. I'm a truck guy. So correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But with the rising price of diesel, that extra cost that you see at the pumps. Remember, I fuel about a thousand dollars a week just in this truck, and that's just doing city work here. I would run through that in two or three days when I'm on the highway, easily. Thousands and thousands of dollars every month, just one truck. Now think about it, there's millions of trucks on the road right now just in North America, not to mention the rest of the world. And diesel prices have gone up 45% since January. All of that price goes down the line to you at the store when you're buying your stuff, unfortunately. So that's why we keep fighting for lower fuel prices so that the cost of living altogether can stay low. But I'm sure all of you knew this already. I might be preaching to the choir. But for those of you who might not be in the transport industry, now you've got a little insight into it. So that was a good chat. Let's go do some trucking. Now you know why we always get a little worried when fuel prices keep skyrocketing, skyrocketing, and don't come back down. All right? if, if it doesn't stop rising, eventually there's going to be a point where no one can afford anything. And then we're in big trouble. So... Let's keep hoping and pushing for lower fuel prices because it's the only mode of transport we have right now. 
we just don't have the infrastructure for any type of transport at this point. Just diesel fuel is what powers the world right now. And we should we should continue to keep working towards other forms of energy, cleaner energy. I'm totally on board with that. But in the meantime, let's not let's not take our own legs out in the meantime. Okay, we got to keep everything moving forward and keep working towards cleaner energy. At the same time, there has to be a plan for a smooth, affordable transition. You can't just snap your fingers and boom, no more diesel fuel. We're all going electric. Well, that, that, that can't work. It just doesn't work that way. But we should start moving in a, in a better direction. I agree, because eventually there won't be any more diesel fuel. We've got to keep that in mind, but we also have to have a plan. We've got to be smart. We've got to keep life affordable for everybody. Otherwise, we're all in big trouble. So I'm glad I'm not in the position to make these decisions. I'm not really uh, in the know of what would be best to do. <laughs> I don't know. I just drive a truck. So the trailer I'm supposed to be hooking on to to bring to Kenora is supposed to be ready at noon. I'm going to be there two hours early to see if uh, it's possibly done early. I hear rumors that sometimes on Fridays they get it done early. So if we get lucky, we can get a two hour head start. And if not, well then at least we're sitting there right on their doorstep when it is ready so we can hook on and go. All right, we've got a big blue box behind us. Tri-axle, 51,000 pounds of goodness inside it. Pre-trip's done and I'm all ready to rock. It's a lady trailer, it's got the skirts.
pickup truck driver driving down the highway goes around the bend and there's a red light comes up to the red light there's a woman in a car pulls up beside him at the red light gets out yells up hey driver you're spilling your cargo light turns green truck driver keeps driving comes up to another red light woman comes up beside him again gets out again says hey driver you're spilling your cargo all over the road driver looks down at her looks back up light turns green he's gone keeps driving third red light woman pulls up beside him again gets out comes and bangs on the window hey driver you're spilling your cargo all over the road driver looks down at her and says ma'am I'm driving a salt truck okay I got one more you ready you ready so there's a truck driver driving down the highway and he passes highway patrol sitting in the median looking at him and as he passes he starts speeding up. The officer notices this and turns on his siren and chases after him. And that only makes the truck driver drive faster. So he chases after him for a while, going faster and faster, and eventually the truck driver decides he should pull over. So he pulls over. The officer storms up to his window and says, Driver, why were you speeding? The driver hangs his head and said, Officer, I'm sorry. My wife left me two weeks ago. And the officer said, that's no reason to be speeding. The driver looks up at him and says, no, it's not that. She left me for a police officer, and I thought it was you trying to bring her back to me. <laughs> I love you, Brett. Oh, please don't kill me. Outside again by the time we're finished today. There's all the whole family. All tucked in for the weekend already. It's a long weekend. Happy Thanksgiving to all my Canadian brothers and sisters out there. Special thank you to all the turkeys. Wouldn't be Thanksgiving without you. <laughs>